So this is the first in a three-part part tutorial as to how to make a basketball game. And the first part of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a basketball fly um, across the screen um, in a kind of projectile motion. And so the first thing I'm going to need to do is to import a sprite. Um, this will be a basketball. Click OK. I can then delete the old sprite. Now once we've got the basketball, I'd like the basketball to move in an arc and later on in the game you're going to be able to adjust the power and the angle that the ball is fired at in order to um, change the way that it moves. And so the first things that we need to do is set some variables um, and these variables will have um, will be of two form. Firstly, you'll have a horizontal speed, and then you'll have a vertical speed. Um, I'm going to encapsulate the whole of this um, this uh, movement into a procedure later, but at the moment, I'll start with just moving the ball through the air in this tutorial. So, um, I'm going to be setting some variables. The first variable will be um, vertical speed, speed. OK, and the second variable will be horizontal speed. I'll click OK. Now, if you think about the way that a ball moves, it's got two components. One, it'll move across the screen at a constant speed. And so, whatever the horizontal speed is, the ball will move that amount per second. So we can very quickly make that script. So when the, we'll say, space to fire the ball, space key is clicked, um, motion, um, uh, well, go forever, or actually repeat, go for forever to start with, um, and motion, change x position by a certain amount, because the x axis is across the screen, so change x position by and the amount that it's going to be moved by is the speed. So what's that happening? Nothing's happening as I click it, so I need to set the horizontal speed to so I you can see that. Stop. And um, I'll have a reset button as well. Control um, when the R is clicked. Go to that position there. Motion go to. It's quite nice that if you move a sprite to a specific position and then go to the motion menu, the that specific position will be copied and pasted into into the uh, go to x y. So I now can click the space and then click R and it will reset. Um, Okay, and we're going to look at that forever loop because it needs to stop at a certain point. Well, it actually needs to stop at the point at which the ball gets back down to the ground. Um, so, um, now I'm going to look at the vertical um, movement. Now, the vertical speed is slightly different because although it needs to go up, at some point it needs to go down. So what needs to happen is every second, every time it moves, the vertical speed needs to get less because there's that downward acceleration on it, so the speed will be changing. Um, and so it's pretty much the same as the as the um, horizontal. However, instead of change y by change x by ten, it's change y by, and the variable will be vertical speed. And you also need to change the vertical speed by a certain amount. So this will make the ball decelerate, and it needs to be a minus number so that it, the, the speed will get less and less each time. I'm just going to try minus two and then see what happens. So if I click the space now, brilliant, and the ball's moved. Now the final thing that we need to do is 
get it to stop moving. So if I click R and space, if you see, it goes down straight away. Let's try that again. R. It's going down straight away. First, if you look at that, what's happening is that the vertical speed needs to reset each time back to its initial amount. So in there, I'm going to go set vertical speed to 30 right at the start because otherwise it will carry on from where it left off last time. I click play. Oh. Stop all moving. Brilliant. But you'll see that it keeps on going. We need to stop that. And that's because these two are encased in forever loops. There needs to be some kind of condition whereby um, it's um, the ball eventually hits the ground. And so to do that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually draw the ground in the background. I could say when the ball gets below a certain amount, but I think by having a floor on here, I'll make it kind of a bit more meaningful. And so I'm going to go into the stage, and I'm going to edit the background. And on there, I'm going to just draw a nice big green line. shift and it snaps to where I need it. Just zoom out just to check that's perfect and then click OK. Um, I now need to adjust the position of the ball to be slightly higher I think. Um, going to the sprite just the position of the ball, so when it says go to 110, it now needs to go to minus 82. That minus 82. Brilliant. So, what I want to happen is for this to repeat until it's touching that colour there. So, let's take that off, put that there, and change that to. See, forever will carry on indefinitely, whereas repeat until will happen at least once and until it touches the floor. So the till, until condition we can do sensing, touching colour, green. Just take that one out as well and copy that. in here, oopsie, da, da, da. and moving that one away. So we've got the two scripts, the one script which is for moving horizontally, and the other script which is for moving vertically. And um, let's see how this works. And it stops there, perfect. So now you can see that you can actually change the initial horizontal speed and it should go different distances. One last time. Perfect. Okay, stop. So next tutorial we're going to look at how to convert these horizontal and vertical speeds into um, power and angle using some trigonometric functions. Thanks for watching.